It is only after I finished recording the previous episode that I realized that our featured article had lost its shape as a result of some of the changes we made on the postcard. So if you remember correctly, we did remove the display of flex on the postcard in order to fix a certain bug with the slider. And when we removed that display of flex, we also changed from using our flex bases on the our child components of the postcard to using the height itself. And since our flat card is inheriting most of its styles from the postcard itself, it means that those heights are going to remain on the child elements of the postcard. That is why the image wrapper and the post info are still having the heights that we assigned to the, the, uh, the vertical card instead of its own height, which is supposed to be 100% of the height of the entire um, flat card. So what we'll need to do is, on the styles for the flat card, where we have selected the post info and the image wrapper, we are going to give this a we are going to give both of them a height of a hundred percent, and when we do that, they are all going to uh, fill up the entire height of the card. All right, so that's all the fix we needed to do for this. Okay, so the next thing we are moving into is the design of our carousel. So let us examine the HTML for a few more seconds. So basically we have a carousel container. It has a header that displays the title of the collection of the carousel collection and a see all link. And then it has the post slider also with all the articles inside it. We also have a couple of buttons for navigation that is the next and the previous arrows. The first thing I want to do is I want to place these icons inside an actual button. It is going to be very important for accessibility and for navigation using the tab key. So we're going to do button and within that button we will place an icon. We're going to move these classes over from the icon itself to the button. So the next arrow now becomes the button and not just the icon. And we'll just give a class of icon inside, uh, inside that arrow. We will do a similar thing for the previous arrow. I'm just going to copy or cut over the classes to the button. We move the icon inside the button and we give it a class of icon just in case we want to give it some specific styles. Okay, the reason I am placing this in the button is because I want to change the behavior of the responsiveness for the carousel. So presently when you reduce, when you visit this on very small screen sizes, the icons appear at the bottom and I don't want that. I don't want them to appear at the bottom. Usually on a mobile device or something like that, uh, users can kind of scroll past this without really realizing that it's a horizontally scrollable uh, slider. So I want these icons, the left and the right icons, to be placed like on the sides and I want them to occupy the entire height so that if the user mistakenly clicks on the card when they were clicking on on the icon, when they were aiming at the icon, the button itself, which is going to be uh, fill up the entire height, is going to capture that click. All right. So you're going to understand it better as we implement it. OK, so I believe that's all the HTML changes I wanted us to do on the carousel. We can now select the carousel container and move over to our styles where we begin to style them. OK, so after the styles for flat card, just before the uh, styles for pages, we are going to indicate here carousel, uh, styles for carousel. And then we'll begin by selecting the carousel itself. The first thing I want us to style is the buttons. So um, 
and they are being contained inside the carousel container if you take a look at the HTML so this is the carousel container and as a first descendant of that uh, container we have the buttons okay that's immediately within the carousel container we have the buttons so we want the buttons to display in relation to the carousel container so we'll give the carousel container a position of relative and then the buttons within it I, I believe the class we gave the both buttons is slider arrow okay so both of them have this class so we will select that class and assign some css that is common to both arrows so we'll give them a position of absolute so that we'll be able to display them in relation to the container and we want the buttons to be tall like from the bottom of uh, from the bottom of the container to where the card uh, the postcards end because the container is really tall it starts from up here to the very bottom but we want the buttons to be only as tall as the cards go okay so we're going to say bottom we'll give it a bottom of zero so it starts at the bottom and then we give it a minimum height of 480 pixels so that the button is as tall it starts from the bottom here and is as, as tall as the as the card we give it a font size of 2 rem so that the icons within it will be a little bit bigger we give a z index of let's say just 2 will be enough and this will ensure that the buttons are a bit elevated above um above the cards okay so this is what it is now it is supposed to start from the bottom of the card to the very top of the card but right now this space is being caused by these buttons so i'm going to remove them so that we can see the real height of our, our buttons so what we will do is i'm going to copy this class next arrow and then in the javascript that instantiates our carousel i'm going to add a key called next arrow and by the way i knew that you can pass this key from the documentation so that's how you set a custom arrow so if you just place a jquery selector to any uh, button uh, on the next arrow key it's going to replace the next arrow uh, the default next arrow button with that element that you selected and the element you are selecting is within the carousel container and that element is the next arrow okay so you're selecting an element within this and that element has a class of next arrow i'm just going to duplicate this and modify it to work for the previous arrow as well so the key for that is prev arrow and we're also selecting the prev arrow button so when we do that and we refresh we now see that our button starts from the bottom to the top but we don't want the button to have this background color we just want it to be transparent so that only the arrow will be displaying so we go back to our styles for the arrow we're going to give the button a background color of none of transparent and then we give it a border of none okay so let us refresh okay so both the buttons are actually being displayed here we haven't yet used um our positioning to place them at both ends of the slider so let us do that now we are going to select the carousel container again the next arrow has a class of next arrow and the previous arrow has a class of prev arrow okay so in terms of their positioning we want the next arrow to be on let me see it should have a right of negative 20 pixels and then the previous arrow should be on the left negative 20 pixels so let us refresh and see what this looks like okay and it looks good 
The next thing I want to select is now we may we may begin from the top. Uh, let us also um, since we replace the default buttons with these ones, you can now navigate using these ones. So as you can see, they are already working. And if the user is aiming for this icon and mistakenly clicks here, it still works. And I think this design is available on Facebook if you are very attentive. I mean this uh, implementation of the carousel buttons. Okay, so uh, let us move on to the carousel header. So it comes immediately after carousel, uh, after carousel container. So we are also going to select the carousel container. And then the carousel header. And we're going to display it using flex. And we want to split the items to be at both ends of the uh, container. So we are just going to justify content space between. Okay. Let us refresh. All right. And now because of the margin and the padding of this element, this one is kind of hanging at the, on top. Let me just let me just give it a red border. So you see the margin, uh, sorry, the padding that this uh, H2 element has. It's very big and so it's causing this to hang on top. So I'm going to select that uh, header, that H2 header. I'm going, I'll give it a margin of zero and a padding of zero. And let us refresh. Okay, and this looks okay. We may remove the red border now. Okay, so now let us add some spaces uh, between the carousel, the items within the carousel. So each of the items is within the carousel, uh, the carousel container. I'll just go straight away and pick the card itself. So for each card, it will have a margin at the top of zero pixels and then left and right 20 pixels. So let us refresh. Okay, it looks good. Uh, but now we have some space. The alignment here on the left and on the right is not good. We want the card to be on the same level as the header. And that's because the cards now have a uh, margins around them so it is these margins that is causing um, our, our carousel to not be aligned so what we want to do is remove the margins at both ends of the slider so let me inspect this in order to make this change we're going to have to override some default classes on our slick our slick carousel so these elements are being wrapped in another div element provided by carousel called slick list so if we remove the margins if we give them a negative margin at both ends it's going to kind of stretch out we give them a negative margin of 20 pixels it's going to kind of stretch out and uh, be in alignment with the headings again so we select the carousel container slick list i believe that's the name of the class and we'll give it a margin of zero pixels at the top and then negative 20 pixels left and right okay so that that will kind of gain a margin for the slick list and with that our carousel is once again in alignment with the header so right now when you reload the page and this carousel displays initially uh, both buttons are displaying and you can click on forever and ever and the carousel will keep scrolling even though there are only four items within the slider so i want to disable that i will go to index.html and scroll down to where we instantiated it and i'm going to add another property called infinite and set it to false so that when we reload now uh, at the beginning you can't go back because there are no articles on this side 
can instead go to the right. And when you reach the end, since there are only four articles, this one will also uh, not be able to work and you, you have to come back. But we won't be displaying both arrows when they are not working because it's poor user experience. Uh, it can be uh, disappointing to see a button that show, shows you indicates that something will happen, but you click it, nothing happens. So what we want is when a button is disabled, we we'll just hide it so that the user understand we have reached the end. Now the way this slick carousel works is this is the previous arrow. When it doesn't work, when it it doesn't go back, you're going to see a class of slick disabled added to it. But when you go back to this direction, that button no longer has that class because it is once again active. So we're going to select this button, any of these buttons that has a class of slick disabled and we will hide it because we don't want the disabled buttons to display. So carousel container, we select any slick, uh, any slider arrow that has a class of slick disabled and we'll display none and make sure we add the important flag to make sure it is overriding any uh, any enforcement by the uh, the plugin. Okay, so now it works. The next and I believe the last thing we're working on is the responsiveness of this uh, carousel. Okay, so right now, if you uh, squeeze the screen closed. It's going to keep trying to force all three uh, items, which is not uh, very good. So we're going to go back to the documentation for Slick and I will search for, uh, let me see, responsive. Okay. All right. So to make it responsive, you just need to add this property called responsive with its value. The value is an array of objects. So I'm going to copy that and uh, add it to the configuration for our own carousel. Okay, here are some instructions if you if you want to unslick and at any particular screen width. So we're not going to do that. So I'm taking it out. So what we want is. Uh, at any screen size, we don't want it to be infinite. So I'm also, I'm going to take the infinite and the dots. We don't need both of those. And I want that on 1024 screen size, the breakpoint here is the screen size. It's the same as just those media queries we wrote in our CSS. So at this point, I want, um, I want the slider to have only two, only two slides. And the slides to scroll will always remain one. So I'm going to take this out on all three selectors. So it will always scroll only for one uh, article, right? Now let me reduce the screen. And once I am uh, past uh, 1024 for the width, you see now that it's displaying only two uh, items in the carousel. So the next breaking point, uh, I don't think we need three breaking points. The next breaking point, let me place it at around, uh, let me see 550. So this is uh, towards mobile. And at that break point, we want to display only one item in the carousel. So let's refresh and we bring it down and when we go below the 550 mark we're going to see that we are displaying only one now and this is totally responsive and our icons are also very conveniently uh, functional okay so that is it we have finished designing our carousels uh, our carousel in the next video we are going to see how we can use the same design and the same configuration for multiple carousels since we have many of them on this home page. We are not going to be writing the code for each one individually. We are just going to reuse the code we wrote for this one 
and it's going to work for the other carousels. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.